What's up my fellow gamers? I hope you guys are all having a great day today just full of so much positivity and happiness dude because you know what I feel really happy right now because I can say I was right and literally almost every single other person who made a video on this topic jumped the gun acted like a complete mindless white knight and got this shit completely wrong. What a shock. Like I said in my first video surrounding this topic gaming news channels or gaming commentary channels have become like the male Karens of of the internet and everybody was so anxious to jump to this Helena Taylor's defense without looking at any of the facts of the situation doing an ounce of research or waiting to hear Platinum Games side of the story so you know this is a little bit vindicating for me because I definitely caught some heat in that video I uploaded I think I lost like 200 subs or whatever from that video which I was definitely expecting some backlash because I was literally the only person whose video was actually being negative against her in the situation at the time but I'd personally rather be honest and let you guys know how I actually actually feel about a topic rather than just pandering to the popular opinion and in this particular situation I think it definitely paid off because I definitely don't have to go back and admit that I was completely fucking wrong about this entire thing like so many others will have to now this news is coming from Jason Schreier which if you guys know he is not one of my favorite people in the video game industry but regardless the dude does have some really impressive contacts in the industry and was actually able to get the documentation with the actual offer they made to Helena Taylor and this is the series of tweets he put out like kind of plugging his article so he said last weekend Bayonetta's former voice actor called for fans to boycott the new game saying she was offered just four thousand dollars to work on it her Twitter videos went viral and stoked a debate over voice actor wages but the full story is much more complicated platinum offered Helena Taylor between three thousand and four thousand dollars per session for at least five sessions which translates to fifteen to twenty thousand dollars minimum according to two people familiar with the deal and documentation viewed by Bloomberg in response people said Taylor asked for a six figure fee and residuals which means royalties off the sale of the game itself negotiations fell apart Taylor denies this account in an email to Bloomberg she called that version of events an absolute lie and said that platinum is trying to save their ass and the game now I want to go ahead and take a look at this article because I think it's really gonna shed some light on this entire thing and honestly it really just shows you that she completely lied through her fucking teeth played up for sympathy points and was hoping that an outrage mob could basically force platinum games hand or at least ruin the launch of the game like what I think happened here which I talked about in my previous video about this is she has a sense of entitlement she believes that she is the character just because she voiced it when in reality she didn't create the character obviously her voice is replaceable because they got somebody else to do it and she felt like she was entitled to play this character and demand as much money as she thought she deserved when in reality that's just her own entitlement speaking and I think this is proof of it she way overplayed her hand demanding six figures for a voice acting role that in her own words took her 16 hours in the previous games was this for uh, how long did it take for recording and um, uh, between the first line and until the project was done um, I recorded for four days Oh wow! You did the entire. Was that Bayonetta one and um, two? Or half it half a day each. So four. So four four hour sessions it took me. Oh wow! I didn't think. I swear Bayonetta talked more than that. Yeah no. Um, <laughs> I'm very quick, and so is Chris Zimmerman Salter. It was literally do three lines of each line, and that's it. Um, it's very quick. And on top of that, she thought she was entitled to a share of all future revenues for the game as well, which is absolutely insane because as we can see by Jennifer Hale being swapped in as the new voice actress, she is replaceable. She is not that crucial to the project. And well, now she's outed as a liar, so I highly doubt she's going to get any work in the video game industry as a voice actress anytime soon because, you know, literally if she's willing to just straight up lie about what a company offered her and try to throw that game and its developers under the bus and get people to mass boycott it because she didn't get her way like who would want to touch her in the entire industry ever again she's completely toxic from a professional standpoint at this point which is another point I made the way she handled this was completely unprofessional she should have just not accepted the offer and walked away like a normal professional person would in any other industry but let's go ahead and take a look at this article guys because you know this is pretty fucking hilarious in all honesty a pay dispute between the creator of a critically acclaimed video game series and its star voice actor reignited a long 
simmering debate over wages in the industry. As is often the case in these sorts of disagreements, the details surrounding negotiations and castings for the upcoming game Bayonetta 3 are more complicated than what has been portrayed publicly. The feud spilled out into the open over the weekend when Helena Taylor, the star of the first two Bayonetta games, said she would not appear in the next iteration set to be released for the Nintendo Switch on October 28th. She posted a series of videos Saturday on Twitter accusing Nintendo Co. and the game's developer Platinum Games of offering her a total of $4,000, which by her own estimations is $250 an hour, by the way, to reprise her role. She said that she rejected the low ball offer and asked fans to refrain from buying the game. If you're someone who cares about people, who cares about the world around you, who cares about who gets hurt with these financial decisions, then I urge you to boycott this game, Taylor said in one of the videos. The videos went viral, racking up more than 9.5 million views on Twitter. Taylor's story touched the nerve among gamers. Voice actors are beloved by fans, but fail to command anywhere close to what a Hollywood actor makes. Game actors have long complained of being underpaid and underappreciated. Some have said they receive little information about their roles until they show up in the recording booth. The industry operates in such a clandestine ways that actors sometimes won't even know what game they're recording the lines for until it's released. The tensions last crested during contract negotiations in 2016 when the union representing many voice actors, the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, orchestrated a strike that lasted nearly a year. One of the sticking points was residuals, meaning compensation for actors when sales of a game outperform expectations. Voice actors gave up that fight in exchange for receiving bonuses based on the number of sessions they work. In the case of Bayonetta 3, the developer appeared to be determined to rehire Taylor, according to two people familiar with negotiations, as well as documentation reviewed by Bloomberg. Here's where their accounts differ. Platinum Games sought to hire Taylor for at least five sessions, each paying 3000 to 5000 for four hours in the studio, which is roughly about $1,000 an hour, by the way, guys, said the people, who asked to not be identified because they aren't authorized to discuss private contract negotiations. That would make the total for the game at least $15,000. In response, they said Taylor asked for a six-figure sum as well as residuals on the game. Platinum declined and following lengthy negotiations took auditions for a new actor. Platinum later offered Taylor a cameo in the game for the fee of one session, which she turned down, the people said. So if you're wondering where that $4,000 number she's talking about came from, it was this one session for the cameo they were referring to after she already declined the role completely. So literally the $4,000 they were offering her was nothing more than them being generous and kind and wanting to still include her in some way, shape, and form after they already hired a new voice actress because she denied their initial offer of $20,000 minimum, basically. So Platinum Games in this entire situation was nothing but kind to her, and she literally took this upon herself to try and destroy this game just a week before launch because she was a petty ass bitch, bro. I don't really know how else to word it better in this situation. I think that puts it perfectly because even after all of this, after she declined to work on the game and they got someone different, they still wanted to include her and still offered to pay her a $1,000 an hour for four hours of work just to make a cameo in the game because they still wanted her to be a part of it, dude. Like, how the fuck can anyone defend her in this situation? And this is backed up by Bloomberg actually seeing seeing literal documentation of this going down, my guy. Like, this is absolutely insane. She completely tried to, like, muster up this massive Twitter hate mob to try and destroy this game before launch because she couldn't get her way. But let's go ahead and keep going. In an email, Taylor described this account as an absolute lie and said that Platinum was trying to save their ass and the game. She said she stood by everything she said in the video. I would like to put this whole bloody franchise behind me, quite frankly. Get on with my life in the theater, she wrote. Oh, isn't that interesting? She was so passionate about Bayonetta in those videos and, you know, standing up for what's right. Now she just wants to move on from the entire thing. Representatives for Platinum Games and Nintendo didn't respond for requests for comments. Hideki Kamiya, the executive producer of Bayonetta 3, called Taylor's allegations sad and deplorable in a Twitter post. And you know what? I don't really think we need to read much more after that, man. I think this really puts a lot of this into perspective and just shows you how manipulative she really
really is in this entire situation. Like, you know, I knew something was up. She was acting extremely petty, the way she was attacking the other voice actress, just her overall attitude of being holier than thou. Like, even for what she was offered originally, let's say it was 4,000 for the entire game, okay? Which now we know is not the case whatsoever. It was five times that amount. But anyway, $4,000 for 16 hours of work doing voice acting is literally the union recommended rate. In fact, it's higher than the union recommended rate. And now that we know that they were literally paying her $4,000 for four hours of work, even after she declined, just makes this entire thing even worse for her. And like I mentioned before, she is toxic now. I highly doubt she's going to work another day in voice acting when it comes to video games. And honestly, this entire situation is the perfect example of not just jumping blindly on a hate bandwagon against a company because it's the popular thing to do so. And you know what? I think we should have a little bit of fun here at the end of this video. You know, let's, let's take a look at one of these people that originally was boycotting this game, saying that no one should go out and buy it, you know, attacking Platinum Games. And let's just go ahead and see how they've changed their tune now. I decided to make a video called I am boycotting Bayonetta 3 because honestly, it did look like they were completely screwing her over. Now, it turns out that she lied. I still want to make it clear, I'm definitely not going to review this game. I'm probably not going to buy it. <laughs> Ever since I put up my video saying I was going to boycott the game, I have been flooded with hate, threats, people literally telling me they had wished I had died when I was homeless on the street. So I'm probably never going to talk about Bayonetta 3 ever again, uh, but let's dig into the interesting lies she told. You gotta love this, man. They take this entire situation where they got something wrong and find a way to make themselves the victim in all of this. What do you think people were directing at Platinum Games? What about that Hideki Kamiya guy who literally deleted his Twitter account probably because he was getting so much shit for this liar and because of all the people propagating this lie without looking into it whatsoever or waiting for the facts to come out surrounding the situation, you know, declaring that a boycott is not only necessary, but it's the morally just thing to do. Like, where's that same energy in this situation, my guy? Why are you the victim, but not Platinum Games? I mean, in your original video, you literally suggested that they threw her out on the street and made it so that she was basically homeless. Now, I do want to make it incredibly clear here. I am retracting my original boycott. I'm still not buying the game simply because... You do realize you have to have an intention to purchase something in order to boycott something in the first place, right? So if you're retracting your boycott, that means you need to go out and buy the game. The Bayonetta community uh, has been so toxic and so crappy to me, and I am a human. I think you guys just see me as a person on a screen. A so are the people who work at Platinum Games that you were more than happy to throw under the bus and literally call some of the most despicable people in the video game industry. But, you know, again, keep that same energy, my guy. You're definitely the victim here. Guy wearing a stupid PlayStation hoodie. Um, just keep in mind, I am an actual person. I make mistakes. I talk about the gaming news. I make like six videos a week. One in every 80 is going to have a freaking error in it. You know, I think it's actually the other way around that maybe one in 80 videos doesn't have an error in it, but to each their own. I just want you to know when I make mistakes, correct me. I want to learn. I want to figure things out. I want to be a better YouTuber. Spamming me with threats, saying the most horrible vitriolic things you can to me hundreds of times over does not teach me a lesson my guy it's 2022 if you aren't used to getting shit on in the comment section of a youtube video i don't really know why you're doing this shit at this point bro like everybody gets shit on it's nothing exclusive i mean shit i am more than used to getting a bunch of crap for my hot takes in gaming these days but you know it is what it is man it's just a fucking comment at the end of the day who gives a shit like for instance i had the helena taylor white knight army come after me in the past day or two so you know it's not really a big deal i didn't learn my lesson because of the threats i learned my lesson because honestly i was wrong being corrected and updating stuff is what i want to do i'm a youtuber but i'm also a human named max shockley please treat me like a human stop the stupid corporate defensive crap 
But see, this is where you need to keep that same energy, my guy, because you were so quick to jump down the throat of a corporation, so you can't really call out people who are rushing to defend the company when you were so anxious to basically slander them to an extent and buy into this lie propagated by Helena Taylor in her effort to basically completely destroy this game a week before launch because she was fucking upset that she didn't get her way. So it goes both ways, my guy. If you're gonna rush to conclusions and throw this company in game under the bus, then you can't really blame people for coming back at you with that same energy. And I mean, again, at the end of the day, it's literally a YouTube comment. Who the fuck cares? Excuse my anger, but honestly, I got extremely mad this weekend when people started l literally, literally begging for my death. Oh my God. Screw Bayonetta. I'm never playing these games ever again. You guys enjoy it. I have no qualms. Buy it. You're probably going to spam me with 80 copies you all bought because you're great gamer dudes. I'm done. <laughs> I'm probably not going to play another Nintendo game for a while. Isn't it just really amazing how quickly the energy changes, guys? I don't know, but that's why I like to wait and see and at least give my honest opinion in a situation because, you know, if worse comes to worse, the thing is, is I can genuinely say I believed in what I said and didn't rush to conclusions and hopped on a hate bandwagon. So, you know what? I guess the moral of this story is maybe it's better before you declare a company evil, you know, demand people boycott a video game or completely throw that company and its developers under the bus maybe wait until both sides of the story comes out i don't know man that kind of seems like a pretty valuable lesson to take from all of this but if you guys did enjoy this video make sure to drop a like on it i would greatly appreciate it and as always i do want to thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day to check out this video and for all the recent support as well you guys are the fucking best and i really do appreciate it so with that shit said i will catch you guys next time See you